All right, so what's up, y'all? It's Michael here, and boy, I just want to give you guys a quick update. Right here behind me is a double wire, right? And I bought this home right here for four thousand dollars. It's uh, early '90s. It's got some vinyl siding and stuff on it, so that's cool. Um, we're gonna take a look inside right here because what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make some content off of this mobile home. And you guys are actually going to watch me flip it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step inside and give you guys, you know, a quick look at the place. See if we can get a wider angle here. Oh, boy. So, yeah, it does need some work. I mean, the shingles and everything like that kind of gave way up there. But, I mean, roof work is not a problem. They normally don't look like this. But then again, of course, you do run across some problems here. So... I'm just going to walk on through what, what I can. You got a lot of vinyl siding and stuff on the floor from the skirting that came off of this place. So whoever moved this mobile home decided to, you know, just leave the skirting up in here, which is okay. Some people might want it. I mean, me personally, I don't want to. But if you look at this, right, it would look like, you know, a nightmare to somebody else. But to me, it looks like money. So this is a three bedroom, two bath. I'm just going to walk around here, give you a look at some things here. Floors and stuff aren't bad. There's a couple of soft spots. There's a panel right there missing out from between one of the bedrooms in there. And that's not hard to replace. A couple panels of sheetrock, maybe a little bit of uh, some insulation in between the walls. It's nothing major. Got a soft spot right here. Where the bathrooms are at, you're usually going to have some problems and stuff. In any room where you got like water at, that's where you can pretty much expect there to be soft spots at. Another little bit of roof damage right there. It's not a problem to fix. Going up there, replace that plywood, filter on over, put some shingles up, and then come back in here with a thing of uh, sheetrock as well. All right, so let's go on back here and take a look at the master bedroom back here. And here's like all the vinyl siding and stuff off the sides of the house. Whenever they move a double wide, they always remove the siding right here so that they can split it up in half and move it. Master closet right in there for that room. Got some wall damage right here over the tub. That's nothing hard to repair. Skylights usually always leak, so those are bad. I might go on ahead and take that out. We got a stand-up shower right here. We got a tub. And who knows? I might just remove that tub altogether. I mean, honestly, who takes baths and stuff nowadays unless you just want to soak? Summer's Eve. <laughs> So what you guys are going to do is you're going to watch me flip this place. And I think it's um, it's going to be cool. It's going to be some great content. You'll actually be able to see me go to work in this place. So I'm real excited about that. Right now, the only reason why I'm not starting on this place today is because I kind of tweaked my back uh, at the gym yesterday. Squats. Man, so it's a convalescence day. Well, probably about tomorrow or something like that, I will definitely be on top of this. You guys can see this uh, from start to finish. So I'm really looking forward to it. Wow. All right, so when I first started working on this place, before I bought it, there was extensive roof damage. And I think maybe a tree had fell through. Normally what I like to do is start working on the floors, but I had to go on ahead and start working on the frame and the walls so that I could do some roof repair so that I could have a nice dry place to go on ahead and work from.
after I got all the rotted walls and everything cut out, my next step was to go on ahead and just cut out all of the spaces in the floor that were rotted, soft spots and things like that, get the bad wood out. And here I am just ripping out a few obstacles, you know, showers, tubs, things of that nature, so that I could start repairing the floors with brand new lumber. Obviously, it's a good rule of thumb. I never try to sell a mobile home that I myself wouldn't live in, and we definitely don't need the new residents of this mobile home falling through the floor. So this is important. And some people might try to convince you to throw the baby out with the bathwater and rip up all the floors, but that's not necessary. But it is a job that you can get done with the right tools and enough patience, and of course, some muscle. <laughs> Then of course, once I got my saw spots and everything ripped up out of the floor, it was time to go into the frame. There was some extensive rot in the frame that had gotten into the walls. As you can see right here, I'm pulling out this foam liner that really does uh, kind of protect the wood because the siding itself is just not going to cut it. And most mobile homes will have a frame that will be framed up with either 2x6s or 2x8s. When it comes to most mobile homes walls, they will use 2x3s instead of 2x4s. I replaced these with 2x4s, then when it came to repairing the walls, I used Luon panel board instead of sheetrock, which is about the same price but a lot easier to manage. When it comes to painting an older mobile home, do not try to skip out on the primer. I use an oil base that will seal up any kind of stains and also kill any odors from the previous occupants. I can tell you from experience that trying to skip out on primer will result in complete disaster. Trust me bro, you will thank me for this later. Not only that, but your walls will thank you too. Also, if anybody's wondering, I do use a Graco airless paint gun that costs about $400 at Lowe's or Home Depot. I've had mine for over three years and it is definitely worth the investment. You can paint an entire house in a day with one of these babies. Now it's on to the countertops, and this is pretty easy. Just go on ahead and loosen those bad boys up on the bottom, take out all that old stuff, and end with the new. So I bought some nice countertops at Home Depot, uh, a really good price. So here I am cutting out the holes in my sink. Uh, pretty standard stuff here. Get any kind of pattern, just kind of make sure that it looks, you know, kind of goes with the decor or whatever that you choose. Also make sure to run a bead of waterproof caulk along the line of the countertop and the wall and just kind of smooth it over with your finger. I think that the end result is pretty damn sweet if I must say so myself. Go ahead with your bad self. <laughs> Now, as you can see right here, all those panels that were on the floor, the siding that was on the inside at the beginning of this video that you saw, I went on ahead and mounted those, even though they're gonna have to be taken down when the mobile home gets moved, but I had to go on ahead and put them up if I want to make the house look presentable. So, like I said, uh, you can get a lot done with that paint gun and you can easily paint the outside. Just when you do that, make sure that you get an exterior paint because if you get an interior paint, you're gonna start having some runs. It's pretty self-explanatory and you can get it knocked out in a day as well. It's mostly just prep work, but the end result is great. Then when it came down to the trim, I just bought some cheap 1x4s and stained them with a gas and tar mixture. I let it air out and then I coated it with some weatherproofing and they look pretty goddamn good and not to mention it is cheap. Now here I am putting up these little wall sticks which are pretty standard in mobile homes and they're a lot easier to work with than plaster. 
Here are my tubs. I took those out and I put a couple of coats of toughest tile on those. It costs about 50 bucks per kit, but it's a lot cheaper than buying brand new tubs. I got my shower stall walls. I'm putting liquid nail behind those because it helps out when I put my anchors back into them. And I also put some toughest tile on those as well. It helps to give your tub a nice, clean, smooth, and uniform look. After take your toilets out, make sure that you replace the Johnny ring. These things cost about two bucks at Lowe's and you do definitely need them. Otherwise, you'll have leaks. That's my mom in the shot. She kind of stopped by and wanted to do something. So there you go. And now you're able to see the mobile home exactly how I saw it in my mind's eye from the very first moment I walked in the door. One person's trash can be another person's treasure. Now I did this entire flip by myself. I could have hired a crew, but I wanted you to know that you are enough. You are capable and adequate. And you know, sometimes I think people just need to hear that. Walk boldly and unafraid into the unknown, into your own flips, and move with supreme confidence even if it looks bad in the beginning. Sit back, enjoy, and let me know what you think about the job that I did down in the comments below. see what I've done. It's time to put this bad boy on the market. But first, pick your time. Now, of course, I can sit back and talk about what a good job I did all day, but ultimately what it boils down to is what do the potential buyers think? Now, of course, I had a lot of people coming out to check out the place and not everybody was comfortable with getting in front of the camera. But this couple right here was pretty open to it. Let's see what they think. a larger space. We recently had an addition to our family. We had bought a few acres of land out in the country and this will be perfect to bring out there um, and to watch our family grow. <laughs> so that's it. If you like the video, please leave a like and a sub. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And if you're a new subscriber, please comment with new subscriber down below. I will catch y'all next time. Good luck out there, my flippers. Peace.